the increase in tuition fees is a big obstacle for many students. Um, but I would just say, you know, if you can do it, do it. You know, when you leave you, you'll learn more. Your job prospects are better. And the other thing is, and this is in a way something which is beyond, uh, you know, what money buys, is the experience of being there, making friendships that, you know, in so many cases are the friendships that last for the rest of your life. Mm. But this is a year of special focus and special ambition. And the centre of that ambition is the Olympic Games. And so use this as a moment to make a resolution to do whatever it is you always wish you could do, uh, but you've never quite got round to. And you've got uh, the, the many weeks between now and the opening ceremony of the Olympics on the 27th of July to realise that. And I hope that those who haven't yet thought about it uh, are going to get engaged because uh, mm. it, you don't want to get to June and realise it's too late to plan anything. And, and I think the second point is that uh, in a way it's fine to say, mm. um, well, you know, the government are going to do this and local are going to do that and the, uh, the mayor's office are going to do, you know, make other arrangements. But so much of what is going to happen uh, during the Olympics is going to come from the impulse and the initiative of uh, campuses, uh, students organisations and communities right across the country. Others, games makers, I mean obviously those, um, the applications for games makers have now all uh, gone in. Mm. Um, there is uh, also, uh, you know, many campuses will be hosting training camps and I hope mm. that where they are, uh, students are going to look at how they can really exploit the presence of Olympic athletes on their campus, um, you know, get some local school kids in, even though it'll be the summer holidays, get school kids in to come and take part in some of the sport. Obviously the athletes that run up to the games are going to be very heavily committed on their training, but mm. with imagination the opportunities are endless. There shouldn't be a young person mm. in the country who doesn't feel that this is a festival that is for them and that there's a place for them there. And that's why I go back to, that's the general exhortation. So yeah. what do you do to realise that? So I hope that across the campuses of this country, we will see groups of students coming together, perhaps under the auspices of uh, sports clubs, perhaps under the auspices of the, of the union, you know, whatever structure it is, and basically saying, we're gonna go for it enthusiasm and mm. you know when we get to the torch relay we're going to see this country explode with excitement with anticipation uh, with pride mm. and what is about to happen and uh, you don't want to be left out of that we have a very clear plan to help tackle youth unemployment which would be a tax on bankers bonuses a 2% tax that would uh, yield enough money to 100,000 work opportunities for young people. That's twice mm -hmm. what the scheme announced by the government uh, was, uh, is going to achieve. Mm. So we've got an alternative plan. It's, you know, this need not be happening. That is the point. And remember that before we left office, youth unemployment was falling, not mm. rising. Well, I think, yes, it can be valuable. I think it needs, however, to be very much part of um, a sort of a, a, a progress so that you have got a very good chance, and indeed the expectation is, that you move from work experience to equivalent to an apprenticeship mm -hmm. to uh, employment. Um, but I think that without that... Uh, confidence of progression from one stage, mm. then all the allegations about exploitation uh, become quite salient.